Let's talk Tanya for the 16th of year. In yesterday's Tanya, we introduced the two modalities of divine light. There's the infinite light, which is known as Soif of Kalalman, that which surrounds and encompasses all of creation. And then there is the finite light, which is called Mamali Kalalman, the light which fills all of creation. So by way of example, let's talk about planet Earth for a second. Um, the Soif of Kalalman, the infinite light of God, the encompassing light of God is everywhere within everything and every single detail. But at the same time, what is revealed in the world? Um, what level of light can the world, can the planet <clears throat> process? So the planet is actually made up of two different elements, doimim and sveimeach, that which is inanimate, stones, minerals, and sveimeach, that which grows. Now both of those obviously require a very, very limited amount of energy, even relative to, for example, animals or human beings. In doimim, in inanimate, all you need is energy enough to sustain it that it should exist. Um, in tzvei meach, and that which grows, so you need energy not only that it should exist, but also that it should grow. So these are two very, very limited forms of energy. These are from memali kalalman, the lower modality of light, as opposed to the infinite light of God. It exists everywhere, but it's not grasped, it's not processed by creation. Now, how is that possible? How is it possible for, on the one hand, this light of God, the infinite light of God, to be omnipresent, to be everywhere, but at the same time to be absolutely hidden from all of creation? And you might want to argue even creation isn't in any which way impacted by it. So the Alter Rebbe gives an example. Imagine envisioning something that you've seen. So let's say envisioning in your mind Niagara Falls. Let's say you've been there and you take some time to envision it down to its last detail or the Grand Canyon or your childhood home or a friend. So when you do so, in your mind, in your thoughts, the entirety of that place, of that person is contained and encompassed in your mind. But that person or that place is completely unimpacted by it, is unaware even of the fact that it or he or she is in your mind at that moment. Even though that, again, every detail and every aspect of that place or person is in your mind at this, at this moment. The same thing is with God. The Soiv of Kalalman, this infinite light, encompasses all of creation. It is the knowledge of God that contains everything. But here is one crucial difference. By us, when I envision something, if I'm thinking about the Grand Canyon, I don't have the physical Grand Canyon in my brain. I have the spiritual form of the Grand Canyon in my mind. God, when he envisions something, and he is constantly envisioning the entire world, everything is encompassed and contained within him, it's not only the spiritual concept of it which is within him, but it actually encompasses the entirety of it, including the physical element and aspect of it, but at the same time, we remain unimpacted by it. It is not revealed to us. So we have over here these two modalities, Memala Kalalman, Seva Kalalman, the finite light of God, the infinite light of God, why are both of these necessary? What role, what different role do both of these lights, the different lights play in creation? That we will discuss, God willing, in tomorrow's Let's Talk Tanya.